A freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to an extreme. 31-year-old Whitney refuses to eat solid foods. I have to make sure I get all the little pieces that I've chewed up out of my mouth. For the past 18 months, Whitney has only been able to drink eight ounces of liquids a day. This whole eating issue has affected my life very severely. And now Whitney's youngest daughter has picked up her dangerous eating habit. It absolutely breaks my heart at three and four and five years old having eating disorders. Whitney lost an alarming 150 pounds in five months, putting her life in danger. With just one week of therapy, can specialist Dr. Dow and JJ Virgin put a stop to Whitney's life-threatening eating disorder? If you don't change, it will mean death. Or will her fear of solid foods be too overpowering? One of my biggest fears is that I will never eat again. My name's Terry Bishop, and my wife's a freaky eater. 31-year-old Whitney has been unable to eat any solid food for 18 months. I have to make sure I get all the little pieces that I've chewed up out of my mouth. She can only drink liquids and barely consumes 10 ounces a day. Whitney's nutritional intake per week is as little as 1,400 calories, a mere 200 calories daily. I'm gonna have you make the steaks, babe. Whitney has been married to Terry for the past seven years, and they have four children. The only way she can eat with her family is to chew her food and then spit it into a cup. No. Whitney doesn't dare swallow it. She just chews on it to get the flavor, to get the feeling that she's eating it. I try to fake it for the kids' sake, but at this point, there's no joyful time at all with food. Are you okay? 18 months ago, my eating habits dramatically changed. We were at my mom's house. She had made the steak dinner, took a bite of the meat, and I choked on it. She just couldn't get it down, and she was turning purple and blue. You're instantly in a panic mode. I had to do the Heimlich maneuver on her, and she was scared. This terrifying experience left Whitney with a debilitating and irrational fear of eating solid food. It's been 18 months since I swallowed solid food. With Whitney's limited liquid intake not providing sufficient nutrients and calories, she lost a staggering 150 pounds in just five months. I don't feel good. I'm feeling a lot of nausea, and I don't have any energy at all. I wish my mom could eat. This whole eating issue has affected my life very severely. We've been struggling because I lost a job, and we went down to one income, got evicted from our home. We had to sell our wedding ring. Whitney's destructive diet has taken a toll on every part of her life, including her youngest child's eating habits. My three-year-old Kirsten is not eating foods because she sees mommy not eating. Kirsten does it over my plate. That's pretty disgusting. It absolutely breaks my heart at three and four and five years old having eating disorders because they're watching what I'm doing. I can't swallow my beef. With both her child's health and her own in jeopardy, Whitney sought help from nine specialists, but it was to no avail. As far as my doctors go, everybody tells me what they think it could be and that it ends up not being. No closer to answers, Terry is concerned for Whitney's life. Every day I live with the fear that she might die and may not be here for us. With Whitney's life on the line, Terry has called in freaky eater specialists, Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin. He hopes that a week of therapy will be the beginning of his wife's road to recovery. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm JJ Virgin, and I'm a board certified nutrition specialist. Terry, Dr. Mike Dow. Good to meet you. Nice Dr. to meet you. I'm a licensed psychotherapist specializing in disordered eating and addictive behaviors. When Dr. Dow and JJ walked through the door, I didn't know who they were or what to expect. I've called in some experts, and hopefully they can help you out with all of the issues that you're having, so. I'm Whitney. Instantly, fear came through my mind. Fear of the unknown, fear of eating. We're just going to park ourselves over here. Right. There you go. That works. All right. The first step today is seeing exactly what is going on in Whitney's life. Can you finish eating for me? <laughs> to actually see Whitney spit up this food was shocking. What are you doing? Why'd you do that? Because I don't like it. 
and to have a young child learning this behavior is absolutely frightening. Whitney, I'd, I'd like to have a word with you, but I'd like to do it in private. I really wanted to express to her the severity of the problem. Whitney is living on borrowed time right now. So how long has this been going on? About 18 months. Where you don't eat anything. I eat my instant breakfasts, fruit and vegetable drinks. I can juice fruits and vegetables. So you're really strainer. drinking, not eating. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a couple hundred calories. Whitney is consuming an all-liquid diet. She's missing all of her major nutrients. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? One of my biggest fears is that I will never eat again. I just want to have my life back. All right. He makes mistakes, babe. 18 months ago, a near-death choking experience left Whitney, a mother of four, with a fear of eating solid food. Now nutritionist JJ Virgin and psychotherapist Dr. Dow have a wake-up call for Whitney. We brought you here because we really want to show you how serious this is. I was scared when I looked at that table of all the different foods. My first thought was, oh my gosh, they're gonna make me eat. I'm gonna choke and die right here. Whitney, what this represents is someone's normal week of food. Now let's look at what you get in. This represents what you consume. The average person eats 11,000 calories a week. You're getting 1,400. That's what you should be eating in a day. I honestly don't know how you're standing here right now. I didn't realize how severe it was until I saw that last table. It was very scary to see how little I was taking in versus what somebody else would be taking in. The next part of shock therapy is going to be very drastic. It's not meant to be cruel. It's meant for Whitney to really see what is going to happen to her life if she does not start making some very serious changes. If you don't make a change quickly, this is where you're headed. When I saw the coffin against the tree, you know, I like became like paralyzed. This coffin represents all of the things that you are going to lose. Your son, Terry Jr., he wants to be a fireman. And if you don't make it, you're never gonna be able to be there to see him put this on. So will you uh, put this in the coffin? We wanted Whitney to put in all of the memories that she will be losing. Mackenzie, in about 20 years, she'll be graduating from college. She'll be wearing this, but you won't be here to see her. Will you put that in the coffin? And Kirsten, she's going to be a beautiful bride. And you won't be with her on her wedding day. What does it feel like to do that? It feels like my heart falls out. Whitney, if you don't change, it will mean death. To see all that stuff symbolizing my children makes me comprehend it in a whole new level. OK, now we can get serious. Now what I need to see is how far gone your health is at this point. So I'm going to send you out for some blood tests, OK? And then we're going to dig in and get started. All right. Shock therapy made a big impact on Whitney. We're ready to move on to the next step of her recovery. I want to show you what you have to live for. My mom's a great mom. This is how much big I love my mom. Hey, Whit. You know, we can get through this. We've always talked about growing old together. We got four babies, so we got to do it together. I love you. When I saw that DVD, I thought this has to change. Mommy, feel better, and I love you. This is who it has to change for. I love you, Mom. Whitney, what was that like to see? Um, very heartbreaking, and I want everything to be better. So let's go take the next steps together, OK? Absolutely. For the last year, I felt very alone. And now I feel like I know that I have my family and my husband to support me. Whitney's crippling fear of not being able to eat solid food has put her family and her health in serious harm's way. I wish my mom could eat. Thank you.
By the second day, Dr. Dow wants to rule out any medical causes that could possibly be contributing to Whitney's choking fear. I want to take Whitney to have a video x-ray of her swallowing. This will allow Whitney to see moment by moment what happens to the food as she is swallowing. Swallowing and throat specialist Natalie Zitnitsky is going to oversee the process. The nice thing about this test, Whitney, is it's going to allow us to separate the physical from the psychological. Okay. You're going to actually see what happens inside your throat. My hopes for this test is that Whitney can see that she can swallow. If that is true, then Whitney will have the confidence to know that she can do this. So we're gonna start with the water. Whitney is given water mixed with barium, which allows the liquid to show up on the x-ray machine. Beautiful, see how nicely? I was afraid that the machine was gonna show me my throat doesn't function but the machine had wonderfully good news. <laughs> Everything looks extremely normal. After we had her swallow the liquids, we had Whitney try a piece of banana. Chew it, swallow it. I am feeling that sensation of choking. Even I'm seeing that I'm not. Beautiful. This is a huge breakthrough for Whitney. This swallow study proved that there is nothing medically wrong with her throat. Well. How'd it go? I'm normal. It's definitely gonna be proof for me that I can swallow without choking on food. I love you. I did not even comprehend that this is my mind that's made me not be able to eat for 18 months. I'm very proud of you. Now that Dr. Dow and JJ know that Whitney's fear of choking is not physical, they can tackle her psychological stumbling block, eating solid foods. The best treatment that we have when we're dealing with a specific phobia is what we call graded exposure therapy. Graded exposure therapy is a technical term for taking baby steps. Everything here is going to help you get better. Before we started the graded exposure therapy, it's important for Whitney to know that we have an EMT standing by. How are you? How are you? Good. So, what would you say your comfort level is administering the Heimlich maneuver? Extremely comfortable. It is that safety that Whitney will feel that will allow her to move through this process. We're gonna start out easy. This is creamy tomato soup on the end. Will you pour some into that cup? And I want you to see how thick it is, okay? Go ahead and try that one. All right. Did you miss my growling? Mm -hmm. We wanna have Whitney move into thicker soups that will allow her to really know that she can do this by just taking one baby step at a time. It smells good, does it look good to you? It's very good. When I was trying to swallow it, you know, I could feel my body tensing up and you know, I could feel, you know, just everything telling me not to do it. There you go. Mm, good work. Good work, Whitney. I'm a little scared of that one. All right, the finale. Like yogurt, we know that, and you like strawberries, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a little scared by this one. Mm -hmm. I needed to stop thinking about the swallow and to just put it in my mouth and, and to just swallow. You did it, Whitney. That is huge. <laughs> it's because I picture my son standing over there. Mm -hmm. Good. I just swallowed something that I have completely avoided since day one of all of this happening, and I did not choke. I wouldn't have believed I could have done it. I can eat it. That would be great. Earlier, JJ had Whitney submit blood samples. Now the results are in. One that I was very concerned about with you was B12. So if you are B12 deficient, you feel sick to your stomach. You're fatigued. I am very shocked at how bad these numbers are. This was a huge wake up call for me. We have to get these nutrients up quickly. Whitney is seriously nutrient deficient. I needed to get some nutrients in Whitney immediately. And the first thing I'm gonna have you do is take a good vitamin mineral supplement every day. Drink it down. 
The products that JJ gave me, they are all liquid. So now I'm gonna be able to get better fast without having to have the stresses of eating solid foods. One of the things that I wanna do is get your greens up quickly. And so we are just gonna give you a green powder. It's a load of different vegetables. When I was drinking the greens, I had this turning feeling in my stomach. I feel really lightheaded. Can you sit down for a sec? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm super nauseous. She's hardly eaten anything in 18 months. I was worried she might see that as a little bit of a setback, but I think actually it was to her advantage because she sees how far gone her body is. All right, how are you feeling? I feel better. All right, I don't know. I definitely know that these are things that I must have to get better. I'm gonna pace this throughout the day and throughout the week and get your nutritional levels back up again. Okay. All right? Okay. JJ and Dr. Dow have started Whitney on the road to eating solid food again, but by the third day, it's crucial for Whitney to be able to eat without the experts by her side. So for the next four days, Whitney will be left alone to try a new diet regimen. I have Whitney eating every two hours, little bits because her stomach can't handle any more than that. The first day alone, Whitney challenges herself with a mini meal of avocado, yogurt, and berries. Whitney is not allowed to use that spit cup. It is a thing of the past. Just do it as much as you can. I've definitely tried to be there for her and just try to be that calming force. <laughs> Relax, <laughs> it'll go down. It's taking a little bit of work, but I'm swallowing the food. All right, everybody ready for some nummies? By the fourth evening, Whitney is making progress. She finds that her new and improved eating habits are even rubbing off at dinner. Here, we'll swallow a piece together. You have some in your mouth? Did you swallow it? Let me see. Good job. Excellent job. But Whitney knows there's still one bridge she can't bring herself to cross. I'm afraid that I will never again be comfortable eating meat. I gotta find out what this is. This hurts. Whitney is also experiencing stomach pains and bloating after meals, which is causing her worry. It's concerning. I don't know, is it? Normal, is it not normal? Hey, right, come on in. How's it going? Thanks. On day seven, Dr. Dow and JJ returned to check on Whitney's progress. Although Whitney's last four days on her own weren't easy, she still managed to add six mini meals and supplements to her daily diet. But now she needs to find out what's causing her stomach pains. I'm getting a lot of pain, a lot of bloating. Whitney's stomach is hurting because her whole intestinal system hasn't really had to work for 18 months. I don't know if my stomach isn't working. I don't know if my intestines aren't working. Like all of the above, none of this <laughs> has been used to working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's not like you can just flip the switch back on. It's a dimmer switch. It's awesome news to find out that what's going on with my stomach is normal or what I'm going through. Now it's time for Whitney to see if she can conquer her biggest fear, eating meat. 18 months ago, this was the food Whitney choked on and narrowly escaped death. And for Terry, it's a long-awaited evening out with his wife. In the last 18 months, me and Whitney haven't had dinner out, you know? It was a huge part of our marriage that it's missing. What are you gonna have? Steak actually sounds really good. What are you thinking? This last challenge is crucial for Whitney's long-term success. Oh, here we go. Fettuccine with spicy pork meatballs. Jeez, that sounds really good. Eating meat again, that is a very big step for her. Pork infused meatballs for you. Oh my gosh. The first thing I thought of when my plate was set down in front of me was, there's no way I'm gonna be able to eat that. That looks really good. <laughs> I'll make you a deal. You eat some meat, I'll try one of the broccoli. <laughs> is she doing it? She's chewing. When I was chewing that meatball and it was my swallowing moment is when I got real nervous and, and tensed up. One big swallow. There's nothing wrong in there. Sit down. <laughs> Good job. For me, that one bite of meatball was winning this battle. 
Awesome. I felt like I conquered my biggest fear in the world. Unbelievable. What's it like for you to be having dinner with your wife at a restaurant? It's amazing. Whitney has broken through that fear, and we feel comfortable now leaving Whitney and Terry to the rest of their lives. Can you guys say to my wife? This was such an important intervention. When we met Whitney, her life was at stake. And now, Whitney not only is getting her life back, but I think she'll have a bigger life than she ever had before. I am going to be different. I have a future to look forward to. You saved your life. It's so exciting to see Whitney's whole food world open up. I'm very optimistic for Whitney's full recovery. We'll be all right. I know we will.